Hey, good morning. Really happy to be here today. So I am the co-founder of a robotics and artificial intelligence company called Anki. We're based out of San Francisco, and we make video games in the real world. So what does that mean, you probably wonder, and uh, what does it have to do with robotics? So I'll start with a little bit of context. So I, uh, I met my co-founders in graduate school. So we were studying robotics, artificial intelligence, machine learning. We worked on all sorts of projects, um, very expensive autonomous robots, half million dollar systems, uh, mind reading machines, all sorts of things. And the technology was really, really incredible. But one of the common themes that, uh, that became apparent is that all of these technologies were focused on, on uh, pure research or space or big industrial applications or automating tractors. Uh, these applications that were very, very expensive but kind of trapped in a lab. And so what we wanted to do was to pull these technologies out of the lab and into people's lives. And that's why we started Anki. And our first uh, direction that we decided to pursue was uh, entertainment. So when you think about entertainment, you uh, maybe think toys. So toys are uh, incredibly popular both today and decades ago. And the biggest appeal is that there's this emotional connection that people form with things that they can hold and touch and collect in the, in the physical world. And it's something that you can't really replicate on a screen. But when you do go on a screen in video games, something really special happens. Um, you, have, uh, you have real characters. You ha the characters evolve. The worlds expand. You have interaction. Uh, really, really deep structure. You have, uh, you have the essence of what makes a video game fun for a really long period of time. But despite that, they're always trapped on a screen. And so what we wanted to do was to take the best elements of these two worlds and literally make it possible to program video games on top of physical characters in the real world. So our first product uh, that uh, we just released in uh, October, it was in every Apple store, it's called Anki Drive. So it is a, uh, it's like Mario Kart in the real world. So these cars are cars that you can control. You use mobile devices like iPhones, iPod Touches, iPads. Um, you can customize them. You give them special weapons, abilities. You can upgrade them. You upgrade the engine. They drive faster. But the interesting thing is whichever ones you don't control, they control themselves. And they react to what you're doing, what the other ones are doing, just like as if you were playing a video game but it's in the real world. It's on a mat that you roll out and you play. And so now, this is where the robotics comes in. What is it that makes this possible? So if you zoom back and you think about robotics in general, you can break up almost any robotics problem into these three challenges, positioning, reasoning, and execution. So positioning is understanding what's around you. Reasoning is thinking about it, making intelligent decision. And then execution is making it happen in the real world. And so now, let's say that we want to bring a racing game into real life. You have these beautiful looking cars are driving around and let's say you want them to be able to drive themselves. So what does that mean? That means every single car needs to understand exactly where it is so it can know what to do. So this is positioning. And this is really hard because suddenly we have to do something that we used to use thousands and thousands of dollars worth of sensors in the lab, but we have to do it at a price point that actually makes sense for a toy that people can buy. So now once you have positioning, you can do reasoning. So reasoning is using that information to make an intelligent decision. And this is exactly how we think about it inside our games. So we use mobile phones as the brains behind what's happening in the real world. And we're actually thinking about thousands of potential actions every single second for every character, like a game of chess. It's thinking about what it wants to do, what you might do in return, and back and forth. And all of that is happening in real time. And so finally, we have these amazing uh, and, uh, and really intelligent and sneaky decisions that the cars are able to make, but now we have to make it happen in the real world, and that is execution. And the reason that this is hard is because it's physics. It's the real world. There's slip, there's, uh, uh, there's variations in motors, and all that has to happen very precisely, but we can make it happen very precisely. And at the end, the thing that's most powerful is that when you combine these elements, the positioning, reasoning, execution, you can do something really powerful, and that's to just abstract away everything that's physical and just treat all of these characters as if they were just virtual characters in a video game. And now we can take all of those things that we love about video games and literally program them onto the real world, the characters, the interaction, the intelligence. And so we have a video game inside a mobile device, and we match it to the physical world with robotics and AI. That's the inner layer that makes the two match up. So this is a really quick product video of Anki Drive. It's a track it's, uh, in the real world. This is one of the characters. His name's Ro. He's kind of a more defensive character. So he's got his own special abilities. He's a little uh, uh, more on the energy side. These guys are a little more balanced. It's more about positioning and strength. And, uh, and so each one is like a character in a video game. They have their own strengths, so we can actually bring that to life in the real world with software. 
So you have full control over their speed, their steering, uh, how you equip them, what strategies you use. And you can actually play a game against three opponents in the real world without actually having three friends nearby. And all of that comes to life because we're using software to define what happens in the real world in a way that's never been possible before. Thank you. So one of the realizations that we had pretty early on is that this has the potential to really break outside of what the, the typical age groups and demographics for toys. We found this to be something that everybody loves. So people your age love it. People my age love it. My grandfather would love it. It's something that just appeals to everybody because at the end of the day, there's this inherent connection with the physical world. And so one of the ways that we decided to, uh, that was critical to bring this to life is to think about the design and make these characters look like something that appeals to everybody. And so we're actually working with a really famous designer from Hollywood named Harold Belker, who uh, designs futuristic vehicles for Hollywood movies. So he designed all the vehicles in Minority Report, uh, Total Recall, uh, the Tron bikes, uh, early version of the Batmobile, and the Iron Man face mask and car. And so he's been working with us in the beginning to design these cars in a way that makes, a, makes it something that would be beautiful to people of all ages. And so these are all the different characters. So the first four, the top four, are ones that are already available. That fifth one, you guys are getting a sneak peek. He's coming out a little bit later. That's uh, Korax. He's the um, more offensive uh, character. You can see that his kind of face looks like he's going to eat you a little bit. But uh, he's, uh, he's going to be a fun one. And so all of this comes together into what we truly believe is the first video game in the real world. And the reason I'm so excited about this is because despite being a really amazing game, it also contains building blocks that are core technologies in robotics, positioning, motion control, wireless communications, path planning, artificial intelligence, interface challenges, manufacturing. And these are building blocks that we can continue to use over and over again as we think about future applications. And we can use this as a stepping stone to make more and more uh, advanced products that actually leave entertainment and start automating things inside the home, in transportation, in healthcare, in sports. And as a whole, I think it's a really exciting time for robotics because we're at this inflection point. So the price of components, of sensors, of computation, the prevalence of modal, mobile devices, all of these things are going in a direction that's going to make it possible to do things that were never practical before. And so I would argue that 10, 20 years from now, there's almost nothing in our daily lives that won't in some way be impacted by robotics. In the end, all robotics is is the art and science of making the physical world understand itself and come to life. And that's something that is very exciting. Thank you very much.